Hello, my name is Al Ali, and I'm the Editor-in-Chief of the Aesthetic Surgery Journal Open Forum. I would like to go over the guidelines for authors, and it would be a very good idea for you to keep referring to this video as you put your paper together. The scientific way of writing and what we accept in our journal is fairly rigid, and it has rules, and what I'll be going over in this video are those set of rules for every section that we are including in the papers. There are a few exceptions to these rules. For example, if you're doing a case report, but almost all articles need to have the following sections within them. The first section should be the introduction. The authors should give the background of what is being studied in the paper. So the reader has enough information to understand everything that happens or that is included after the introduction. I will say that it's very important that as an author, you should be as concise as possible. At the end of an introduction, it is the usual practice to include either a purpose or an objective. Now you could give it a title of objective or purpose or you could just make it the last statement or two of the introduction. And that basically should make it very clear for the reader what you're trying to accomplish with your study. The introduction should not contain a summary of everything that's in the literature, just what pertains to the study. The second aspect is the methods section. The way you as an author should think about it is if I was going to do that study that you give me enough information so I can reproduce your study. It should not contain results. It should not contain an introduction to the subject matter. It should just purely give me a way to reproduce what you're planning to do or what you've done in your study. The results section should basically be your data. It should not have any qualitative evaluation of how good or bad the results are. It should just purely be data. It should not include anything about what was done to get the data. It should just be data itself. The next section is the discussion section. This is where you can expand on your ideas, take what you've said in your introduction and maybe expand it a little bit more, cover a greater amount of the subject matter, and you can make some conjectures about potential benefits or lack of benefit of whatever it is that you have studied. At the end of the discussion, there should be a separate section about conclusions. The conclusion of any paper should only be based on the data that's presented in that paper. You cannot conjecture, you cannot predict what will happen or give your personal opinion. It should be completely based on the data that is produced during your study. The other things that we require in our journal is that any clinical photographs need to be very well matched before and after. There should also be a minimum, with very few exceptions, of six months post-op follow-up. You can't have a one-month follow-up or one-week follow-up. That is not something that we can publish. As a general rule, we don't want anything that is distracting in the photographs. So clothing is not ideal and you should limit your pictures to the areas that are involved with identical lighting and identical positioning from pre to post-op. If you're an international author and English is not your native language, we highly suggest that you have a native English speaker go over the article to help you get the proper grammar as well as the right wording for our readership. And now that we've gone over what is expected from a scientific article, I want you to know we're very excited to get your submissions and we hope we can help you to publish your work.